Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today's video is going to cover a PowerShell script that will update the user account expiration. Uh, so for example, a company that I had worked for in the past would update their uh, account expiration date based on user training that was on an annual basis. So instead of having to go into the user's control panel and updating their date manually, I went ahead and automated this process by using a PowerShell script. This way we could save some time and put our time elsewhere. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so for the first part of this video, we are going to cover the script and how it's going to work. I will show you all the various outputs that we will get. And then I will cover the script line by line so you guys understand on how I went about it. So before we go ahead and do that, let's go ahead and create a new user. We're gonna name him Jack um, Johnson. His username, his logon name is gonna be uh, first.last. Let's go ahead and head into his profile real quick. Let's change his account expires and let's say that it expires on the 14th of August, 2022. All right, so now we have our user created. Let's go ahead and run that script. If we head over to the ISC, we'll go ahead. I already have it opened up. So let's go ahead and search by username. So we'll do Jack Johnson. It's going to display the username to us and verify that this is the correct user that we would like to update. So as you can see here, Jack Johnson, Jack Johnson. Yep, that's the guy. So let's go ahead and put a yes. Was the training performed today? So that's saying that this user came in today, went over the books or whatever, the PowerPoint show, reviewed his cyber training. And now we're gonna go ahead and say, yes, this user came in today. It's going to update the user. It's gonna say update complete and it will exit the program. Let's say that the user came in um, another day, maybe yesterday or last month. So we'll go back in and go back to Jack Johnson. We're gonna say, yes, this is the user we're looking for. No, the training was not performed today. And we'll go ahead and specify this date. We'll say, uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Jan 1999. This guy came in years ago, I guess. All right, updating user, update complete. Uh, just a few more things. So if we go in there, let's say we can't find a user. It's going to say searching AD for user. User does not exist. Exiting program. Let's say we do, we do have a user. That is the user we're looking for. No, the training wasn't performed today. And you put A instead of an actual date. It will say the date format is incorrect. And it will therefore exit the program or the script. All right, so that's pretty much all the examples of this script uh, or different outcomes or results that you would get. So let's go ahead and pull this down so we could cover this script line by line. All right, so here along the top, we just put some notes. So we're gonna say user completed annual training and an account expiry needs updated. Obviously that is the whole purpose of this script. So then the next line is going to be a comment saying catch all errors. So this is a variable by default is set to continue, um, but instead we want to set that to stop. So for instance, there's two errors that you could get, one of which is caught by using the try catch and the other one is not. But if we set all of them to stop, we could go ahead and use these try catch blocks at the bottom, which I will further explain once we get to that point. The next line, as you could see here, is ask for user. So we're gonna uh, create a new variable, user, we're going to use the commandlet read host and we are going to uh, put some text in there to prompt the user as to what we're looking for and we will store whatever the user enters or the administrator enters and we will store that in the user variable. The next one is search active directory and assign all users to a list. So here we have another variable called users list that we had created. We're going to use the get ad user commandlet with the filter of all the asterisk. And then we're gonna pipe that into for each object, member name, and the SAM account name. So essentially what we're looking to get is the SAM account name for all members in this current domain, as you can see here. 
and then we just put right host searching for 80 user or searching 80 for user granted that's not necessary but it, it will just kind of show what's going on behind the scenes again if we wanted to we could even slow it down so, so it's uh, broken down as the steps are being performed all right so if we continue on we can see user exists in active directory and then we have the first if statement right here so it's going to say if user list contains the user that the admin put in inputted then we're going to run this following uh, script or part of the script if that is not the case if the user list does not contain the user it will run this else and it will say user does not exist exiting program sleep for five seconds and exit well let's say the user does exist we'll go back to the top we'll say write host user found and then we want to run get ad user a commandlet that will display the properties of the user that the administrator is looking for so at this point we are at this point right here so these are the properties are associated or some of the properties that are associated with that user account using the get ad user commandlet and it is asking us to verify here so user v another variable that we had created it is going to store the answer or is this the user that you are looking to update so whether we put yes or no that will be stored in the user v variable we continue on we could see the verified correct user so at this point we want to verify the user input so if he does say yes this is the correct user granted we are using another if statement and we are using the two lower built-in function so whatever if he puts a capital Y or a lowercase y it will put it down to lower and it will match it to lowercase y this way that if, if he did happen to put an uppercase y it would still continue onward because that is exactly what the, the administrator is looking to do otherwise it will not continue and it will go on to an else statement or it'll go to the next if statement so here then we got another variable called today date we're going to get date or use the get date for um commandlet and the format that we are going to use is a four year two month and two day and then we are going to use that in the next um prompt that we are going to give to the administrator uh, using the train date variable so we are going to read host again and we're going to ask the administrator was the training performed today and then we're going to print the today's date and then we are going to ask him yes or no another if statement similar to up here it's going to be if train date to lower equals y then do this function so let's say he does he did perform the training today we are going to create another variable called tspan and we're going to use the new new time span commandlet and we're going to assign the days parameter 365 from there we are going to create yet another variable called acc expire so account expire and we're going to add the t-span 365 to the date, get date commandlet so essentially that is adding 365 days to today's date because get date by default will display today's date granted this is the different format but that is exactly what it would be doing and then we are going to use the try catch block as i was saying above the try catch block it will perform it will try to perform a set of functions or commandlets and if those commandlets present an error it will be caught by using this statement here the reason why we use this statement at the top is that like i said some errors are not uh caught using this statement unless you set everything to stop Another way of doing this is you could use uh, some commandlets have what is called a common parameter. So instead of doing that, we could just go ahead and go over here and we could say action or error action. And we could say stop. That would kind of uh, bring us the same result. It would just stop right here and would not continue onward. So if we didn't have a try catch block, and we didn't have this this error action statement here it would still go onward and it would still run the um 
it would still run this stuff. So it would say updating user update complete, even though even though those actions were not taken because there was an error. So those that never happened. All right. So back to the try statement. So we are going to use the set ad account expiration, set the parameter identity to the user, and then the date time to the acc expire per, or um, variable that we had defined earlier. And then we are going to use set ad user again the identity to user and we want to change the description to reviewed and then today's date so to show what this is doing if we open up users let's go to what well, we have to change it again so let's go ahead and run through this one more time update user update complete now if we go in here refresh go to Jack Johnson we can see that it says reviewed 2022 0715 and if we go to account we can see that the date is set a year in advance so that is is what these two statements are doing as you can see this is pretty simple right host updating user sleep right host update complete sleep and that's pretty much it again if it catches an error so if there is any error it will be caught and will say error encountered could not update user so a good example of this is if you are running isc or even a powershell prompt or a powershell shell that was not that did not have the correct powers to do so then this error would present itself and it would say error encountered could not update user this way you know that the action was not completed as intended so if we can go ahead and highlight that real quick as well so let's open up just a regular isc with no administrator privilege we'll open up that script Now let's run that script. I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna say yes, and it should say error encountered, cannot update user. That is because we are not running this script as an administrator, instead we are running it as a user. All right, so let's continue on. So now we are at the point of using this else if statement. So we are saying, that the training was no longer completed today instead it was completed previously or at a different day by defining the um, train date variable to no or n what we want to do here is kind of the same thing but instead we want to get the the date the training date that was performed and assign that to t date and then we are going to use a try block again we're going to set acc expire to t date but we are going to assign that as a date time object. So this way we could use that over here, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, and then uh, again, a catch block, date time formatting correct, and exit the program. So if you put A, then it would exit the program like I did earlier. So if we continue on, let's go ahead and ACC expire. So we are going to set ACC expire add days to 365. So if this was not a date time object, this would not work because add days is part of the date time commandlet. And then the pretty much the same action is going to be taken place here. Set AD account expiration, set AD user, write host, write host, catch the error if there is any. And then last but not least is the else statement. Uh, actually, this is not even used anymore. So we could just go ahead and delete this because this will be all caught with the errors or uh, hold on, get rid of this. Because that is all caught now with the try catch blocks. And that should be it. And then again, like I said, user does not exist. Write host, user does not exist. Exiting program, start sleep, seconds five, and exit the program. All right, so I hope that video helped you guys in one way or another. For those that are looking to update the user accounts expiration date, this is just one PowerShell script that may help you automate this process and save you a little bit of time so you could spend it in other areas that may need it. But that is it for today. And as always, never stop learning.